how to manage finance in the family. To be a man is a heavy task. Yeah. Those that are married, they will understand better. For you to survive in marriage, one year, two years, six years in marriage, when the trouble comes, when the trials and tribulation comes, you don't have what to sustain it. And all of a sudden, God came, God came through for you. In a period whereby divorce had been, had taken all over the court now, no court cases again. Go to Barasot here, you see divorce cases, left, right, center. In a period whereby men are no more men, they allowed their wives to take up responsibilities of their home. Yes. Sorry guys, I came for you. I know of a friend that is crumbling now in marriage because the husband is not a man anymore. The only thing the guy knows. Kai, we have children here. Ha! Ha! the other room he comes in baby any food in the house the food he did not give money to cook please ICT help me with the scriptures 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 it's a familiar scripture but I want everybody to read but if any I'll put a man there if any man because you are the head of the family if any man provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house. In other words, relative. You can't provide for your house. Don't let us provide for your relative. The Bible says, He had denied the faith. God forbid. The only thing we have, sir. Uh, uh, the only thing we have as believers now is our faith. And if you deny the faith, you are no more a believer. And hell is your portion. The Bible here says, You have denied the faith. And it's worse than an infidel. I won't want to go to that infidel. As such, guys, give me your ears. It's a serious matter. Yeah, it's a very serious matter. That a guy will come back to the house, all he knows is the other room, and baby is there food, food you never give money. Even if you don't have that money, at least you have something to just show that you are committed to this cause. But we don't have trust, guys, again. Women, and as such, you still... And I say, mean, sorry. Is that this same man need respect from the wife? How? She will go out and hustle, come back, get money, provide food for you, and say to you at the other room, and you still want to be a man? No, sir. It is not possible. Are we together? If you cannot provide for your house, sir, you don't deserve to be called a man. We need to wake up and smell the coffee, hit the road, get something doing. Be, as a, be a man indeed. Be a man, what, what does a man mean? You are the head. You set the pace. And in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 or 18, the Bible says, And God saw that it is not good for a man to be alone. He made and helpmate. In other words, you must have something doing first. For a helpmate to come and accompany you. Are we together? Yeah, Are we together? You must have something doing first. Managing finance in a family is an important aspect of maintaining financial stability and achieving a long-term goal. Don't allow anybody to tell you only love can preserve home. Mm -mm. Finance. Money. Because you can't tell your wife, baby, I love you when she's hungry. When the, your child will run to you, daddy, I am hungry, and you still tell that child, I love you, I love you. It is not done anywhere. The only answer they will know is that you provide food for them. That they will know that you love them. As such, for you to stabilize your marriage, you need money. Let me not see finance. My man, you need money. I come. Hello? So number one, that's the knowledge I want to give to you on how to maintain, to manage finance in a family. Number one, open communication a lot of guys nowadays they don't allow their wife know what they aim hello I'm a man they don't allow them know what they aim as such the wife will believe the wife may not know that the husband earns 80,000 so we have a lot of people that don't understand the wife don't know what they aim they can't say they are pay, pay sleep 
Your, if you know that your husband earned 80,000 and you can never, you will see a wife go demand of something of 100,000. Is it possible? We need to be open to our spouse. This is how much your husband worth. This is how much your husband can pay. This is how much comes in every day. If you're doing business, oh babe, I went out today and God has saved us. I have so so and so so amount. The woman in the house will know that the demand she had in mind can be settled or cannot be settled. Open communication. Sir, we still have good women that can manage force. Hello. We still have, even if there are few, we still have good women. See, okay, that is why when they tell you that if you want to marry, listen to me. That is why if they tell you you want to marry, go and marry a God-fearing woman. A God-fearing woman will know how to manage force. But some of us, we choose to neglect a God-fearing woman and go for a slave queen that has nothing to offer. Hello? And now, if you went for a slave queen that had nothing to offer, who are you to blame? God or yourself? You blame yourself for it. So as such, if you're open to a God-fearing woman, the God-fearing woman knows that this family is me and you making this family. If we succeed, it is together, we succeed. If we fail, I am involved in failing. Number one, be more Hello? Hello? Are we still together? Yeah. Are we still together? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25. The Bible says, therefore, having put away falsehood, let each other of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. We are members in the service, sir. That he understands. Sir, if you are privileged to be a pastor in church, you know the rate of settlement, marriage settlement, pastor, sister, say, in a day. Every day. And sorry, it is not their doing. The way the devil is fighting marriage is now. Bible knows that marriage is one of the things that gives God to make God happy. And he's fighting to make sure he makes God happy. Fighting marriages. And one of the ways is through my husband is all over. I am proud of Papa Man. Why? Four families, all of them here. But they, they got to know their spouses. That is a clear indication that we have we still have godly homes. I was so very happy when I heard a husband say, My wife does not have security code in the 21st century it still means that we still have godly people yes we still have we still have marriages that the devil cannot penetrate but if the husband hides the wife hides eh 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 it's a time bomb waiting to listen are we together number two set financial goals are we together Set financial goals and rush. Establish short-term and long-term financial goals as a family. This includes saving for a house. You have the money, you must set goals. You are living in someone's house, you must pay. You know, charity here at home, you know, when the rent is due, until you have a plan that any income that comes, we have a budget for it. We set goals for this income. You can't manage that way. You must leave sentiments and set goals for your finances. Go yak ya mro me do again you follow me do go in one. Ah ka ire man na foke ne kire. Then you you have responsibilities. You will fail. And so marriage is marriage is for who hate me. That will choose to swallow their pride. Close their ears about what some other person has to say. You are not competing with anybody. Mm -mm. You are strictly on your own. If your marriage fails, that means you have failed. Nobody will be held responsible for your marriage. Are we together? Set a goal. How are we going to pay the rent? When the money comes, we set aside parts. When the money comes, there are goals. For the money, not just coming and there are no goals. Some families, friends, they don't have goals. 
Your husband just called me with money. I want to go down the other room. I was saying, I found the arrow. I'm a fool. So if it's a man, I can't be able to be in a different place. He said, no, it shouldn't be done that way. There must be goals set aside. For your what? Your rent, your children's fees, and other things you didn't fit to include. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. The Bible says, Commit. I'm giving you scriptures to know all these things have their super bodies. I have one person that if I do to preach for me, you tell me anything that's which I'll be this bad news, I don't take it. Because the manner by which I live my own life is a scripture. If it's not written here, it does not make any sense to me. Hello? It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Are we together? And thy thoughts shall be established. And there's a trans translation that says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans. Your plans will be established. Number three, create a budget. In sinners, there's what you must, you must cannot do without budget. Create a budget. Develop a monthly budget take, that takes into account all income sources and expenses for the family, including essential expenses such as housing, utility. You must budget for utility. Like now, some of us, you pay your, uh, you have to buy four for your car. You have to buy four for your generator. You don't have lights. And such so, 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 those things, you did not, by the beginning of the year, you don't have plans for them. But if there was a budget for things of that nature, you have the right to go and be open to your spouse. We have to amend this budget to suit our present condition. Hello? You must have create a budget for your income. The next point, track expenses. Sir, I don't know the whole class anymore. But until I was exposed to this, I called myself for it. I would put money in my pocket, I would just be buying. Be buying. So of us, we have the gift of buying. It's not the gift of the Holy Spirit now. We just buy. Back in square. We can take a point where you have just buy. You just go, you just buy. There was no budget for you just to buy, 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 buy. No. You cannot in this present economy until Jesus visit us. You can't be doing such thing. You track your expenses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 for those that are writing. One who is faithful in a little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little also dishonest in much. If you're not faithful the way you spend and track your expenses, friends, you are a candidate of federal high cost. God forbid. God forbid. Because when you may spend, I don't want day like that, I just spend everything I had. I'm going to offer. And my wife says, I had my, my so much I have. My wife says, okay, no. Baby sleep. I see me, I'm dying back. You want to go back to us as a father without diaper and milk that your boss are there. I was to go back home very early. I paused to make sure I could get those things to go back home for peace to rain. Hello? But if you have to track your expenses, you go, you cannot see yourself in this category of people. The next point, sorry. Reduce debt. I will fix it, don't worry. Reduce debt. Who come up with something like that? Those. Reduce debt. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 7 says, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. You cannot be a slave to any person you are born to a lender and you expect your home to be stable. You are a slave. If your phone of borrowing, you are who? A slave. As such, reduce, if possible, eliminate borrowing from your life. Let your son be, I am content with what I have. Are we together? Don't borrow. If you borrow, your house will not be in order. There will be a time when you are borrowing, the person, oh, the lender is asking for that money, and your wife wants to tell you, I love you. If you have a second, I If you the devil can help you, and you five fold ministry unknowingly. Why? Because you are a slave to a lender. Reduce 
debt. Okay, save. The next point, save and invest. A lot of us don't understand. It's about investment. You have to save and invest. All of us here, we know that there's a day. I don't want to go into that. My title will not permit me. I had a rainy day in my life last year, November, not last year, February. Took my wife to the hospital for a delivery. Okay, it was my antenatal seven months. That day was the seventh month. I went to the hospital. The doctor told me, um, Your wife's busy. He's very low. The last time she came was 36, and now it's 27. Maybe she's bleeding inside her. We need to bring out the baby to save the baby's life and the mother's life. We here, I thought I had planned for it. The hospital, the set amount they told us to go to for the delivery. I had planned to just 20,000 to act balance. So I comfortably told the doctor, I'm not going to just do it. Let's go. I told my wife, I'm not going to do it. I said, I'm not going to open it. And when the doctor opened it, brought the baby out, the doctor did not tell me that they don't expect how to need it in the doctor told me, this is a mini thing in Vietnam, rainy day. And me here, I was bold as a man, gave me a man, gave me a provide. When the doctor said, This is me, I need to be better. As at that time, you are carrying your child, 1.1 kg, one kg, you go up, very little, struggling to breathe. As a father, you must do something to make sure this girl lives. And the doctor said, If you can't do it, what do you can do? What? How much size is it in Vietnam? He said, For one week, it's 350,000. <laughs> and me here, I didn't have such money. Really, they said it. But if you have saved money somewhere, really they will come. And at least, even if you can't foot the entire bill, you will start off soon. Guys, let's get back home. Learn how to save and invest. Sir, every day, let anyone in this place have the one okay? He does not spend three to five thousand dollars daily. Abba. But if you spend every day like five thousand and one naira is not coming in, sir, I don't time bomb. Praise the Lord. We must save and invest. Praise the Lord. The next, uh, second to the last, second to the last, involve everyone. When I say involve everyone. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Involve any, everybody. When that child is old, he or she can never depart from it. You are planning for the family. Let the child sit there. So that at least, if you've been given this child an allowance every month or every year, you teach that child on how to save. Involve everybody. If you start training your child out on how to save at the early stage, nobody, even if she's married or he's married, no wife, no spouse will want her to deviate from that aspect. Praise the Lord. Involve everybody. Finally, and if possible, you can do all those things. Seek professional advice. Hello? Imemo, seek professional advice. And as a minister of God, let me end this way. For want of time, I want to add one point. Please, I want everybody to look at me. I want everybody to look at me. I want to add just one point, and I've dropped the mic. In Psalms 24, verse 1, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. No matter how you plan, if you don't have God, you can't survive. Hello. I, I, I just kept that one so I can take it home. No matter how you plan, if you don't have God in your family, the devil will so use you. Because you can even save the money without God giving security to that money. Issues of life will just come up and take that money you save away. And as the issues of life take that money save away, another need arises. But if God was in your family and he protected that force, no devil will come or devour to come and take that money away. Rather, you save that money to do something good for your life. You need God in your marriage. And now that that was it, the Bible talks about the last days. That if we are in the last days. And in the last days, the devil is at the peak of his game to make sure that a lot of us families, we don't have peace. No stability, no matter how hard you love your husband, no matter how hard you're sincere with your wife, the devil will always look for a loophole to attack you. But friends, if you have God in your life, 
there are times that you are so confused in marriage. You're so confused on the decision to take. You're so confused on the next step to take. But all of a sudden, you will just hold your wife's hand and say, let's pray. Lord, we need your help. And God will come through for us. That is what I am talking about. We need to invite God into our marriage if we want to sustain our marriage. You know, you have a shawama. It is beyond shawama now. It is about God. About God contending with the devil for you. It's about God being the center of your marriage. If you cannot do it, then you cannot be, I, I cannot just do it. I love that song. God, if this is you in my marriage, you cannot handle it. Nowhere else I can go. I don't invite anybody to my marriage. Nobody talks. The only thing I need is counsel. So this is what is happening as my pastor. A pastor I trust so much. I know has the fear of God. This is what I'm passing through in my marriage. He will give me counsel, but when I get back to Lord. You are the one that instituted marriage by yourself. You have the honor for marriage. What can I do? And there is always a way out. Friends, even in I am, I don't know what to put and down. It's about time we go to God and now surrender our marriage to Him. Surrender our marriage to Him. When you surrender your marriage to God, because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There won't be anything that will arise in your marriage that the honor of the earth will not meet it. There won't be any situation in your marriage. You don't have a child in your marriage. And because you surrender, the surrender, the flourish into God's hands. He said, there shall not be barren among you. The Valiant Man, bringing good tidings.